A 33-year-old mom decided to drink just one more cup of coffee to keep up with her busy schedule. This is how her kidneys were shredded to pieces. Ovi is a 33-year-old mother of three. She always considered having three kids a full-time job. And especially since her newborn arrived, that also proved to be a nighttime job. Only problem, Ovi also had a full-time job. And with her one-year-old keeping her awake at night, being present at work during the day became very hard for her. This is why she has gotten into the habit of seeking for help in liquid form. And everything was fine, until it wasn't. That fateful Monday morning on her way to work, Ovi decided to pick up just one more pumpkin spice latte to help her with the morning tasks. But she already had her morning coffee. Well, two cups actually. And a couple of Red Bulls on top of that because, well, she didn't really sleep that night. But there was no time to think about how much caffeine she was getting. She was late to work again, and she knew how furious her boss was gonna be. In the morning traffic now, Ovi is worried she will not make it in time. But wait, why is my heart pounding so fast, she thought. Something is not right, she thought. She was very nauseating now and she was feeling a pain in her chest. Luckily, she is able to stop the car before anything worse happens. She throws up. Out of the car now, Ovi lies on the floor. She starts to shake uncontrollably. Ovi is now having her first seizure. A passerby sees her and calls for an ambulance. Less than half an hour later, she is in the emergency department of the nearest hospital. Her conditions are serious. Catherine here. Welcome today to a new mystery from the emergency room. Today we talk about coffee. Recent report states that Every time we put some in our bodies, our kidneys may get damaged. This is true, at least for half the world's population. Here's why. Medical news today titled Drinking 3 or more cups of coffee daily may increase your risk for CRF. So what's new about that? While some studies listed coffee as a danger, previous consensus in the medical world was that drinking up to 400 mg of caffeine per day, which translates into 4 cups of brewed coffee, is perfectly acceptable. Not just that, studies state that there are metabolic benefits from drinking coffee. In particular, a recent review of 34 studies on people with hypertension, heart problems, and diabetes found out that drinking coffee in moderation is not just safe for people with metabolic problems, it is even beneficial. This is also due to the fact that coffee shows more antioxidant activity than green tea and cocoa, for example, to antioxidant superstars. And this really matters. However, a new study seems to put everything in discussion again by proving that half the population may be damaging their kidneys just by drinking coffee every day. Is this what happened to our protagonist Ovi? Let's find out. In the emergency room now, at examination, the staff had no idea about what happened to Ovi. Her husband is immediately contacted and he is given bad news. His wife, perfectly healthy until that day, is now risking her life. 
no, it wasn't a car accident. Even worse, the staff has no idea about what's going on. She had another seizure during the trip in the ambulance. Ovi is sweaty. She is agitated and confused. She's shaking and hyperventilating, and she can't really tell what's happening either. She was going on with her busy morning when she had a seizure. But why? Exams are ordered and Ovi is also found out to have hyperthermia or too high body temperature. This is a very bad sign after a seizure. It means something dangerous is still going on. When Ovi is asked what's happened to her, all she can say is too much coffee. More tests are ordered and the staff finally had a clue about what's going on. So question, what caused Ovi to have a seizure? What the hospital staff reads on her test was unusual. Firstly, they find that she has hypokalemia. This means that her potassium level was too low, low enough to cause her heart to beat erratically. You see, potassium is used by the body as a signaling molecule. It tells the muscles to contract or to stop contracting. And this is also true for the cardiac muscle. And that could explain the seizures. But during the test, the hospital staff also found another very worrying problem. Her creatinine is now 8.4 mg per dl. She was in dire need of emergency RRT now. But as the staff reads the results, Ovi suddenly falls unconscious. Again, her heart isn't beating anymore. Something inside her body is making all the signals from her brain malfunction. Her heart is now just shaking in place instead of beating, and blood can get to her brain. Doctors immediately rush in to do CPR. She is eventually resuscitated. But over the next few hours, these cardiac arrests happen three more times. Beta blockers to stabilize her were given, but to no avail. You see, beta blockers are used as the first line against caffeine toxicity in clinical setting. Why aren't they working on OV? Will the hospital staff be able to understand what's going on before it's too late? Okay guys, today's medical mystery is a very unique story. Caffeine toxicity is not something we see very often in clinical practice, especially not from beverages alone. When asked, what happened, the only thing Ovi was able to say before becoming unconscious again was too much coffee. She knew that she was getting into the habit of drinking too much coffee every day. But how can that cause a seizure? Well, coffee is a stimulant. In moderate amounts, like one cup of coffee, it can help you stay awake. It helps completing more tasks during the day. The thing with coffee is, your body adapts to it. After a while of drinking coffee regularly, you might find you've developed a tolerance. This is very common and it doesn't usually mean there is a problem. By the way, you can tell if you are developing a tolerance to coffee because you will get a headache when you don't consume it during the day. That means you're experiencing withdrawal. Caffeine appears to constrict the blood vessels in the brain, so when you don't have it, the blood vessels are dilated and that can cause the headache. Now, like many substances that have an effect on the brain, caffeine effects largely depend on the amount you have in your body. We know that taking less than 300 milligrams of caffeine per day is considered safe. But how much caffeine did Ovi take that day? She had two large cups of coffee, 300 milligrams of caffeine, then two Red Bulls, another 250 milligrams, then one large pumpkin spice latte, another 200 milligrams caffeine. That's around 750 milligrams, more than twice the limit. But she didn't consume that caffeine in a day. Ovi consumed all that caffeine in less than two hours. Into big amounts, like what Ovi ingested, caffeine won't just keep you awake. It will do many other things. It may block the brain from sending the right signals to the heart. The brain uses electricity to send signals. It also uses chemicals to modulate these signals. 
What caffeine does in the brain is blocking these modulators. It causes the brain to get excited. That's why it makes you feel awake. But if 750 milligrams or more caffeine are present in the body, the most of the signals are unmodulated. The brain doesn't stop getting excited. Everything discharges at once, which is bad. In scientific terms, this is a seizure. In the case of Ovi, it was a tonic-clonic seizure, which also caused cardiac arrest. This is a type of seizure that involves a loss of consciousness and intense muscle contractions. Now, in some cases, when these contractions are so strong and they last for too long, they may literally destroy a large amount of muscle tissue in the body. This is a serious condition called rhabdomyolysis. Rubbed, of course, when damaged muscle tissue releases its proteins and electrolytes into the circulation. This huge amount of protein punches through the nephrons, like they're made of butter. And this also explains why OV creatinine was so high. She was suffering from AKI, caused by rhabdomyolysis. We will see if the hospital staff will find the right way to control this serious condition in a moment. Before that, what many people may be asking now is What if you only consume a moderate amount of coffee every day? Can it still be bad for you? There has been a long-standing controversy regarding coffee safety on hypertension, heart health, and consequently on kidney health. Coffee is one of the most widely consumed beverages in the world, so today's scientists have tons of data on it. Thing is, data about coffee is not uniform. Certain studies say coffee is good for you. Other studies say it can, on the other hand, damage the precious filters of the body. In other words, some people seem to get benefits from caffeine, others seem to damage their organs even when drinking less than 4 cups of coffee per day. As we have seen in the beginning of the video, a new study seems to have found a reason why this discrepancy happens, which is a variation on a gene called CYP1A2. According to this study that aims to reconcile the previous data, half the population, those with this variation, will increase their risk of developing kidney dysfunction even by drinking less than the maximum tolerable amount of coffee. This means that for one out of two people, drinking coffee means causing actual damage. What the author of this study recommended is a re-examination of the current guidelines approving up to 300 milligrams or 3 to 4 cups of brewed coffee per day. So the less caffeine you drink, the better, according to this study. Now guys, if you ask my opinion about coffee, I'd said not to worry. There is one more new study about coffee every day. I'm not kidding. While I was writing this script for this video, some news popped up on my feed. Researchers published a study on the BMJ, literally the 15th of March, which is today for me and two days ago for you if you're watching this video on publishing date. What they found out is that caffeine is really good for you. It may reduce the risk for obesity and T2D and prevent metabolic diseases. Probably tomorrow they will say it is bad again, however. But the general consensus is still that coffee is not harmful if you drink it in moderation and most importantly if you don't take it with sugar, creamers and other junk foods. And I also want to add one thing. In my experience, the sooner in the day you stop drinking coffee, the better. Caffeine is also known to decrease sleep quality, which in turn may affect kidney health negatively. According to the FDA, the half-life of caffeine is between 4 and 6 hours. This means that up to 6 hours after drinking a caffeinated beverage, half of the caffeine you consume is still present in your body. And you really want all that caffeine to be out of your body already when you go to bed. In short, you want to only consume coffee in moderation and only early in the morning. But 
What would happen if you disregarded all this advice and took a huge amount of caffeine in a very short amount of time? How bad would it be? Let's find out. Well, ODing on coffee is rare. You see, people usually understand pretty quickly what their threshold for coffee is, but that doesn't mean it cannot happen. In 2017, a South Carolina student tragically passed away after drinking too many caffeinated beverages in a short amount of time. The coroner declared that he drank a latte from McDonald's, a large Mountain Dew soda, and a highly caffeinated energy drink in just under two hours. And while this is an uncommon tragedy, there have been more hospitalizations reportedly caused by caffeine supplements. Caffeine supplements are dangerous because you can get the same caffeine from the tip of a teaspoon of powder as from a large cup of coffee. Earlier this year, a 29-year-old personal trainer from Wales passed away after a measuring mistake with a caffeine supplement. The father of two miscalculated the amount of powder he was meant to use for his workout. Paramedics tried to resuscitate him for 45 minutes, but he was later pronounced dead. So, is our protagonist going to suffer the same fate or will the hospital staff be able to save her? In clinical setting, caffeine poisoning is rare, but it's not unheard of. There are procedures and guidelines to treat it. When there is cardiac arrest like in Ovi case, chest compression and defibrillation are used. There are also medicines that can be given to stop the toxicity of caffeine. But in some cases, it's not enough. After prolonged and apparently useless defibrillation attempts, the doctors finally decide to try an innovative procedure. You know, there are ways documented in literature to successfully treat caffeine poisoning. A recent study reported that a really high dose of insulin that could only be done in a controlled setting inside a hospital could work. It was OV last chance. And it worked. Her parameters stabilized very quickly and she stopped having heart attacks. As soon as Ovi was stable, she was given fluids and was started on RRT to protect her kidneys. She was then given insulin for 72 hours. After a few days, Ovi was eventually able to go home safe to her husband and kids and to recover at least part of her renal function. Luckily for her, there was no lasting brain damage either. And guys, if you want to see more stories like this one, this video up here is for you and this is all for today. Thank you for watching.